Hello, thanks for joining us. We're going to do some math for aptitude tests. You look here down at the bottom, one problem was taken from both the SAT and the GRE. All we did was change the numbers around. That's the second problem in the metrics. Uh, the GRE, believe it or not, actually had it as an easier problem. So uh, let's move. Okay, uh, this one was straight from the SAT. Student averages 72 percent on test. If the lowest score is dropped, the average rises to 84 percent. What is the lowest score? Why don't we, this was done already, use the language that was given to us and let's start thinking about a problem. We know it was 72 and 5 in case you want to try to do a proportion and we know it was 84 and that's the problem. We don't know what was going on, but we do know it was 84 out of 4. And we're trying to figure out what the score would have been if something like this had happened. So just try to get your mind to think through what to do. Okay, now what you're going to do is move on. Step 1, the word average is used to confuse you, so please don't think about averages in pure terms. Your first thought is to average the test scores. Instead, we need to determine a difference of the scores because we've got to see what happened because why are we using this word a difference? Because we started out with five tests. And now we have four. So because we're saying one dropped. So there's got to be a difference showing up somewhere, okay? So 72 times 5 is what? Let's check our math. We have a 0, carry a 1, 30, 5 times 7 is 35. This is 360, okay? And 360, so this was for the 5 tests. And please make sure you keep these numbers separate. Okay, then next we have to move on after we get the five tests. Keep in mind the next thing we're going to do is the same thing for the fourth test. That's on the next slide. So the next slide says to multiply 82 times 4 because one of the tests was dropped. Keep that in your mind what happened. You're dealing with two numbers. You started with 5, one was dropped, and so you have 328. It was 2, 8 times 4 is 32, so now you take 360 minus, and you get 32, and your answer is C. Okay? All you have to do is remember what's going on. You can rewind stop to play to see the steps. If you have any questions, our email is here, down here at the bottom. Okay? So let's move on. All right, there's a metric conversion chart that we converted. They're over the internet, uh, some are free if you need your own. If not, you can look at this one. This is question number two. Th this, this, this question was on both the GRE and the SAT. And guess what? It was written like this on the GRE. And you would think that because it was on the SAT, the SAT would be harder, but it wasn't. So, Anyway, what we want to do next is if 10 millimeters equals 1 centimeter, how many square centimeters does 1 square millimeter equal? So they're going backwards. Your milliliters are way over here. And liters are small. Or remember, we do liters with water. Kilometers or kilometers, as people say, is what people run. These are... These are translated. Um, these are translated into into miles. So you have to keep up that the kilometer is actually higher, because a milliliter is a bottle. It's what, it's what they put water in liters. Okay, and you see here you are right here liter. This is ten to the first power, which equals zero, because um, they have to have something here. If your decameter is here, your this is here and try to keep on what these are 
and your conversions, a lot of you who are in other countries, especially South America, you're good because you have hect acres and this is your conversion unit. Okay, so let's do this and let's move on. You can think for yourself and start here and just say, well, they're telling you it's 10 milliliters, so you had three zeros here plus an extra one here because you had to do 10. This is a conversion. All of these are based on one as the base unit. Okay, so if you were given three zeros here, you had to have another one here for the 10. Okay, so here we go, and all over the world, everything starts out with bases of 10, like these are, and they start out base 1. So now you start here, and you have 1,000, and here's point zero, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and this would be 10,000s to make up for this number here. Now you can easily go ahead and say, if this 10,000, one, 10,000 is over here, then all I need to do is start multiplying because you have one centimeter, which is one 100. And you can see the conversion because you had a point zero, and all you have to do is take one out for the 10. And then these are equal. But the problem is you have decimals showing where they move. Because if you looked at it like this, you would go to circle C. One. That's wrong. So make sure your mind understands what's going on. Okay. Uh, we're going to do this with an equation. 10 milliliters is equal to 1 1,000 times 10. And 1 centimeter is 1 one hundredth times 1. Because the unit, this unit here, stays the same. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on here. Now we're going to think about how to take this 10 that the author gave us, this 10 millimeters, and turn it into centimeters. And we have to, because the author gave us a question, this is all just explaining it. We're going to use an equation. And because 10 was given to us, I use this 10 right here. And remember, we're doing fractions, so it becomes 10 over 1. 1 1,000th is written over here times, times, excuse me, 10 over 1. Okay? And that's why I'm writing this 10 here, because 10 is your unit. All of this is your base unit, with your bases all being in 10. That's all across the world that people use this base 10 measurements. I think I said that in the other slide. Okay, so now you're just going to straight multiply. And when you multiply this out, that you, you cross out this z uh, 0 here. That becomes 1. Cross out this, and boy, look what you're left with. 1 over 100. You just take out this comma, too. And then you see 1 cross this, 1, 2, 3, okay, uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3 digits, 2 zeros, 2 zeros. Now this is the same, 2 zeros, but how do you write that as a meter? Meters are larger, guys, so if you have this 0, 0.00, you have to take over for this as a meter, and when you multiply it by 1, you have to move it over, so it becomes 0 0.01. Okay, so this is what it, this is as far as this, because when you convert, you're doing zeros, and remember, because you're not doing negatives, you're doing basically zeros, you need to account for three places. And your one is over here because when it's one over 100, you're after a decimal, okay? So you're after, the numbers are after the decimal, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to start here. 
decimal is here. Has to be a zero on this side, but what's going on? Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. You're converting a smaller number to a larger number. Smaller is over here, larger. Centimeters are, are like the size of a penny. Okay, and these uh, kilometers, that's what people run in, uh, people jog it, but that's a, isn't the Tour de France in a, in a, in, done in kilometers. So that's what's happening here. And so therefore we have our answer is A. People, please do not get stuck. This is the most chosen answer because everybody forgets to do their metric conversions. Uh, it's not going to be a 100 if you're going from a smaller value to here unless you were doing 100 millimeter, milliliters. And you're not doing that because this means that you're over past this divider here because it goes up. It's greater than. Okay, this side is greater than, guys. It's my attempt at a greater than sign. Not very good, but yeah, I'll, do it. I'll just do it small digits like I should. Uh, small. Uh... Okay, see, this is greater than over here. So the answer is A. Try to think about what's going on. You're going from smaller to larger. And if you can do that, you will have your answer. When you do these numbers here, you're increasing it. If you chose 10, that means you just went and saw 10 milliliters and didn't think when the conversions. And this is called a distractor, this D. Okay, so now you got it between these two. You have to explain it. Two zeros, one, two zeros. If you have any questions, we're at jacobitslearning at gmail.com. Thank you. Have a great day.